Hi, and welcome to the Investing on a 9-to-5 podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Teddy. We are excited that you are joining our show, Investing on a 9-to-5, where we will talk about our investment journey, our current strategies, and learn about all kinds of investing-related topics. But before we dive in, we are not financial advisors. We will not be held liable for any personal investing decisions or losses that you may occur in the market. This page is purely for entertainment purposes only. All right, welcome back to the Investing on a 9 to 5 podcast. It is I, the Dividend Dog. We have Paul underscore Options Legacy. And on our Sunday Funday podcast, we have a special guest. We know we know him on Twitter as Stan, Ca- Stan Stone Capital, um, but we uh, go by his Dave as well. We have him on the podcast today because he actually is living the fire lifestyle and he will be going into um you know how he got to the fire lifestyle um his you know his strategy and going over you know just who he is and um you know what he's done and how he continues to provide you know his information to the dividend community and um i'm gonna hand it over to him and welcome sandstone capital thank you thank you teddy i appreciate paul thank you also for having me uh, on your podcast um a little bit about me i uh i'm 53 I live in Florida. I'm married with uh, four children. Uh, all are grown, and uh, well, we only got one more left here. He's 16. So, my dividend journey. Oh, where do I begin? Let's wind the clock about almost 25 years ago. Uh, I always was into stocks trading, and um, I enjoyed it. I just um, everything I did in my downtime, I did investing. And um, I made money, and I lost money, and that's how we that's how we learn if you lose money, right? Mm-hmm. And um, markets come and go. I I've been through it all. I've been through the. Uh, I remember the nineteen eighty seven crash. Mm. I remember two thousand eight. Uh, we all remember COVID. You know the yes. downturn in, in March of twenty twenty, uh, and now what's going on recently with. Uh, this bank out of California. That's gonna be interesting. Yes, that's gonna be huge. It is. It is. But but you know something, guys. Um, you know we're gonna have some rough storms a little bit, but uh, I may be looking at the world through rosy set of glasses. But we're we're gonna turn out okay. We're we're gonna turn out okay. It's gonna be a little rough for a couple of weeks. Uh, Jerome Powell seems to be on his uh, interest rate hike. And I understand there's a good side and a bad side to everything, but just keep dripping, just keep investing in dividend stocks. You you can't go wrong. You just keep that's the point. Dividend. I think most people yeah. can get they can get all excited about recent moves and and pullbacks and rallies, but when you when you convert your mindset to that long term dividend or long term investing um, mindset, then you can weather these storms. Um, I'm sure Dave's been through, I, I know I went through the same kind of thing when I first started, you try different things. We talked about it before, you know, some people go, I went through it, the penny stock phase, the, the mm-hmm. meme phase and try to get rich quick and, and those things. And that's when you really find yourself losing the money, but you learn the greatest lessons there to get to the point where you are now, where you're like, okay, I'm just going to settle down, let time do its job and, uh, and ride this wave how, wherever it goes, because, under that wave, you know, you're steady. You've got some good companies that you bought and you can hold on for a while. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and that, and that, that's, that's what I'm learning too, is just being patient and dollar cost and averaging and not really letting the market, um, anything short term, you know, make me deteriorate my long term plan. So right. you, got, you guys are absolutely hitting it right on the nail with it. Um, so Dave, as far as your um like journey, investment journey, now when you first started out, um I wanted to this question that just came up to me yesterday, has your your strategy has it pivoted? Like has it changed um throughout the course? Like as far as like when you first started, like if you're like in your you know, mid twenties and thirties, and um were you like more searching for growth and then you pivoted to all right, now I'm I need to slow it down. I I'm at the age now where I'm not really looking for so much growth. I need to pivot to income. Can you go into a little detail on when did you maybe realize that or 
pivot to that or have you pivot to that type of um, at all in the portfolio? Or has it been like the same balance throughout your entire investment journey, if that makes sense? So, uh, Teddy, you present a very interesting question, and um, the answer is going to be multifaceted. Um, I believe, and I mentioned this before on Twitter, it's a military principle called OODA loop, O-O-D-A, observe, orient, orientate, decide, and act. And I'm finding as I grow older and invest in worlds, and I'm just finding there is no cookie cutter way to do investing. And I notice there's a lot of people on Twitter. Um, we look at them, we're like, mm, I wouldn't want to buy that. Or I wouldn't want to invest this way. But one thing's for sure, we can all agree the only wrong way to invest is when you lose money. Right? That's correct. That. <clears throat> so the strategy of you know the 20, 40, 60 portfolio, you, you can do whatever you want. What I did is I used the OODA loop. You know, I tried 60% growth because I was young back then and uh, 40% uh, dividend stocks back then. Abby was, I still had Abby, I had IBM, uh, mm -hmm. I had Johnson Johnson, I had at and I had the dividend stocks. And what I would do is what you guys are doing is take those dividends and just keep building up the portfolio and buy a more growth stock. Gotcha, That's okay. I so, I mean, to each their own, whatever you seem fit, um, there's a lot of people on DivTwit, you guys, a whole bunch mm -hmm. of them that doing are doing it the right way. You know, again, the only wrong way is to lose money. Um, or to keep losing trading, money. We can lose money once, but if you keep Or not investing at all. <laughs> right, yeah, right. The worst way is not to invest at all. You bring them up some point that that's, that's correct. To not do anything, uh, you're not gonna, I mean, let's face it, living off the government, it, it's, uh, you can't live a good life living off the government. There's just no way or having a regular nine to five job. My my best advice to your viewers and listeners of this podcast is if you're in your twenties and thirties, my ultimate advice is first of all, pay off your debt. I know yep. a lot of people don't like this guy. He's okay. Dave Ramsey's on to something. Pay off your debt. Pay it off. Have an emergency fund, at least a thousand dollars. That that's you got to start in different areas. Mm -hmm. Pay that, get that emergency fund because we all know the car breaks down, your heater doesn't work, something happens. Yep. Have a thousand dollars, build it up, two thousand, three thousand, because when that emergency heat does come, you don't want to you know take off uh, a loan against your four hundred one k. I don't believe in that whatsoever. Or cashing out your investments that you've just, you've worked yeah. so hard to DCA in and now you're up 10%. Now you got to take it out. You know, exactly. So exactly. That, to be honest, when I first started investing, um, I, I I had a habit of like doing that. I'm like, dude, what are you, why are you taking out your profits? You got to like keep that stuff in. And I, and more and more, like I read and when I got more on Twitter, I started to like, yo, you got to keep this stuff and you can't be, Taking it out, then putting it back in. I'm like, that's that's not how compounding interest works. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we have to, right. you, once that goes into the market into your portfolio, it stays. That's how I look at it. it stays there. It's not even money I can't even touch. Somebody that's on our DivTwit feed was asking the question. I'm not going to mention names, but should I cash out to bet a uh, down payment on a home? Don't do that. Uh, I'm a realtor <laughs> part time. Not I'm retired. Yes, I, I saw that. Pay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are plenty, especially nowadays, especially nowadays, there are plenty of programs to help you fit down that down payment on a new home. And if you're a new home buyer, all the power to you. Right. Right. I mean, offer up eBay, whatever, look around your house. I guarantee you, anybody listening and watching this, I guarantee you, you can make 500 to 1,000 bucks just by selling the stuff you don't need in your house. I guarantee it. Oh, for sure. I I see, so yeah, I see people do it on Twitter and they're like, yeah, I got stuff on eBay and offer up or a pair of shoes and they sold for like 150 bucks. I'm like, wow, that mm -hmm. was just easy at 150 that, you know, that can go towards something. So yeah, the yeah discipline that I comes mean, in place is taking that money and putting it away and saving it until it is, until it builds up to that, that thousand, couple thousand dollars. Cause a lot of people wanted to sell something like, oh, I got 150 bucks. I'm going to go do something with it. That's where the discipline comes in for, and it's 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 hard. I look at I'm I'm with you, Dave. Where I'm gonna be um, turning fifty here in a couple of years, and I look at 
at Teddy here, like, man, I wish I was where he was now when I was his age. <laughs> oh, remember, you know? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, if I was doing what he was doing when I was his age, then I'd be in a whole different place right now. But I can't complain where I am. But that's just the mindset that you're right. Starting early, the earliest you can start, the better. You know, I've got my kids who are um, 11 and eight, and I've got their M1 account set up, and I'm and my 11 year old will come look at it and I'll explain to him what it is and what a stock is. And, you know, so getting them in, in started now, hopefully that, you know, they're starting even better off than, than Teddy is, which is going to be cool for them. Right. Yes. And I'm going to say something. It may not be popular with a lot of people, but parents, please, 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 please don't spoil your kids. I know somebody in my family who um, bought their teenage teenagers, brand new iPhone 14s and pays for their cell phone bills. Wow. And then when they become driving age, no problem, you know, just I'll pay for your car. The only thing you got to pay for is your gas. And guys, you know, parents, you're doing your kids an injustice because what happens is because you make that child dependent. You need to make your mm -hmm. children independent. Mm -hmm. I texted a picture of me two or three days ago. This kid here was 12 years old, 13 years old. I was out shoveling snow. For twenty bucks a driveway in New England, I cut oh, wow. lawns. I did what it took to be, you know, earn my own money. So I know it's yeah. tough love, but parents, please don't spoil your kids like that. It's okay Christmas time or birthdays, but make them work for the money. You know, maybe have them go get a part time job because you teach that self independence about them at that earlier your age. And I'll be honest, that's a struggle that I have. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to, get, you know, give them things, give them nice things that you know. I didn't grow up, I grew up in a, in a family that worked really hard and, mm -hmm. you know, we had everything we needed, but it wasn't like there was super extra stuff. You know, we live in kind of a, a raggedy house and out in the country and I look at my kids now, I'm like, oh, I want them to have, you know, some things I went through. But at the same time, I know that's important to teach that. Just the other day, um, my 11 year old Nico, he comes to me, he's like, he wants this new game. <laughs> I look at him, I'm like, okay, what, let me see it. You know, it's a, it's a 13 bucks. It's on steam. You know, it's one of these, you know, right. like uh, mm -hmm. Roblox kind of things. Mm -hmm. and I said, okay, here's the deal. I said, I'll get the game for you, but you got spring break coming up and we, we, we set up a calendar of, of chores that he's got to do while on spring break and all the chores each day got to get done before he gets on the computer. So mm -hmm. the calendar's all laid out and he agreed to it. And I said, if you don't do it, then, uh, you know, I control the game on my phone so I can turn off and turn off your access at will. So right. it was, you know, now the, it's going to be on me to follow through if that happens. And that's the struggle parents, you know, the struggle is real to, to be that parent that shuts it, it down. Of course, you know, you want the best for your children, but right. I'm just talking about teaching them the concept. Of no, I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. All. I just, it's, 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 it's struggle and it's, you got to work through it, but you, if the, you hold to it. And then Dave's right. Your, your kids will me and um, Teddy were talking the other day, I think about some of these legacy families that, that blow through their um, inheritances, you know, within a few generations, you know, like the Rockefeller, right, those yep. kinds of families. And it's the same kind of thing, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the Waltons in a couple of generations. Um, right. Walmart's big out here where I am, you know, so these families who don't, and I, with them, I think it's a little bit different because there, there are certain requirements in their family to be part of the, the corporation. They have to be out here in, in the area of Walmart. They have to do certain things for the company. Um, so there's some requirements there to maintain their statuses. Um, but yeah. that's, you know, it's, it's not no different than, than teaching your kids how to earn an allowance. You know, it's whether they're getting billion dollars in stock grants or whether they're getting $10 a, a week. It's all about teaching them responsibility and, and how to uh, accept the responsibility when they don't fall through on their side. Right, right, right. Um, and, and, you know, something, too, um, for all your listeners and viewers out there, um, what's great about the Div Twit community is we all have different backgrounds. It's a mirror mm -hmm. of different cultures, backgrounds, um, men and women alike. We all have one thing in common, because I mentioned this before on my interview with the Income Posse, with David and Dave. That's what makes our Diff Pit community enjoyable to watch and encourage each other. And I said this before, I don't post stuff to brag or, you know, look at me. I yeah, of course. No, 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 no. We don't take this as that. No. Yeah. Well, I, 
I, I get a few DMs like, you know. Like, oh right. my God, Dave. I, oh, yeah. I, I'm like, all right, how can I make some more money so I can just give yeah. it? It's what's possible. <laughs> right. What's possible. Right. Like, what's I mean, possible? you saw that Ferrari I saw yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just shows you what's possible. I even showed my wife. I'm like, see, this yeah. is like what's possible if we can, you can do our thing and pay off our debt, live mm-hmm. below our means and work hard. Like, this could be, you know, our lifestyle one day. Not saying I'm we're gonna go grab a Ferrari or anything like that, but like right. having the choice, the time to like right. even do that. You know, you you can't just go randomly look at a Ferrari and be like, yeah, I'm go bear Like you have to have things in place to do that. So it's like, yeah, I want I want to figure out what you've done and how you've done it, and obviously time in the game and patience and mm-hmm. going through all these ups and downs will pay off, like you said. So. No, I never see. It. I never see it as bragging. So, yeah, no, and I and I told the <laughs> wife too. I said, "Honey, don't worry. I don't want to buy it. Yes, we can afford it. I can write a check on Wednesday. It could be in my driveway. But three hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. Um, you know, this part takes over and says, I, I have better things to do with that money. <laughs> so, right. Because you know, the minute I drive that off the car lot." It's going to depreciate probably I don't know fifty sixty grand in the first month. So <laughs> I just like the boat. It's just the idea like I can afford that, you know. Yeah, I'm not bragging, but I like to do it to encourage people because I'm in a position in my life where I can say, oh, I'm really kind of you know losing my marbles a little bit. Hey, yeah, I read a check. Let me buy a Ferrari, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. But that that's the that's the idea. I was trying to tell my wife because uh, it, it's it's a pretty nice feeling. Um, yeah, it's an awesome that kind of position, work. and I want I want everybody on Div Divfit to be the same kind of status. Absolutely, you know, um, it and, takes uh, years of work, but the time goes by so quickly. You know, it does. Me and- it, it does. It almost seems like yesterday because I can vividly remember the '87 crash, watching yeah. CNN. I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? But <laughs> going through that, going through the 2008 crisis, you know. Mm-hmm. We all pull through. All yeah, pull I learned through. a lot. I wasn't doing investing or in the markets much in 2008, but I was in a situation where we were going to look for to buy a house. Mm-hmm. And we were in the process of looking and, and applying. And then things started dropping. I told my wife, let's, let's hold on for a minute. Let's see what happens. And then, you know, the, the bottom fell out, which I'm glad, you know, because we would have been one of those people holding the bag with some kind of weird interest rate or who knows what. But right. then well, that's, we didn't have like money, you know, we didn't have cash. You know, I looked at it, I thought, man, it's people who have money in the bank, who have cash, they're cleaning up right now. Cause our whole street, more than 60% of the houses had, you know, for sale signs or whatever in front because, you know, they had been um, lost in foreclosure or wow. people were trying to get out. And, and so that started making me think like, oh yeah, there's, there's a way to make money without, you know, being like born into it without having some kind of silver spoon handed to you. It's just going to take some work. And then it was a few years later that I met a friend of mine who it got me interested in investing. And I'm like, okay, there's the path, you know? So it's been a little slog since then to get to where we are, we are now, but um, it takes time. You know, it takes time. Dave and I were talking before we started recording, we have a similar background. Um, he's got his um, retirement from public service which I know was a hard job and appreciate that that you did for us. Yes. Um, I retired from uh, the state of California in a similar um, role in law enforcement. And, you know, that time went very fast from the, I remember that started the Academy and going through that and being a new boot. And all of a sudden I get to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm looking at retiring and, and getting out of the game. And, and I look back on that time and it seems like a long time when you say it 17, 18, 20 years, but it went so quickly. So for those yeah. of you who are starting, you know, if, if you're at Teddy's age or younger, you're going to turn around and you're going to be 40 before you know it. And you want to look back and go, what did I do with those 40 years? Did I blow it mm-hmm. or did I, you know, don't, and, and we joked before about, it's not about giving up a latte or not having fun, you know, go to the movies, enjoy your life, but do it yeah. responsibly, you know, budget set aside and don't spend more than you can and save as much as you can because it goes fast. It does. Yes. Right. The time. I mean, even my time in the market is going fast and I've only been, I've only been here for a couple of weeks. It feels like but I've been <laughs> investing, you know, for two years, but it's like, holy crap, these two years have gone by so quick. 
And it's like, I've accumulated so much information, you know, from you guys and everyone else. So it's like, like you guys said, that time does go by fast. I'm like, I can't even imagine how the next 10, 20 years are going to go by. You've gone through like eight market cycles in two years just because of the ups and downs you've experienced, Teddy. My hair is going to fall out. (laughs) (laughs) Mine mine already has, you know. I do long-term investing on time. My hair's falling out. (laughs) You look at that picture of Morgan Freeman I saw the other day. He looks like, have you seen that? (laughs) Yeah. he's got white dreads man it's funny but yeah. oh man i'm gonna continue yeah. to grow that's out. gonna be teddy pretty soon <laughs> so um there is one thing i need to uh address go ahead and again it's to each their own and i mentioned this when uh dividend dave uh did his podcast with me mm-hmm. um, it's a scary word but scary is your perception of everything uh the word is called risk now, yes. um, I would never, the, the one thing maybe a lot of you don't know, but um, I got a significant boost in my portfolio about three years ago or two years ago when I retired. That's how I was able to retire. And um, what I, I mean, I show my portfolio to some seasoned brokers and they would, what I did, they told me, they would never recommend doing this to the clients. But let me tell you my story, how I got to my wealth status uh, in this day and age. Um, I was uh, at the sheriff's office and I got assigned as an indoor desk job. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just, uh, <laughs> I took a break for a little bit, you know? So yeah. there was a computer in front of me and you know me, I'm a very analytical and fundamental analysis kind of guy. And uh, I watched the markets all the time. And um, this one particular company out of Austin, Texas, kind of caught my eye. And at that time, I had about a 20% cash dry powder allocation in my portfolio. Mm. Just sitting there waiting to be spent. Mm -hmm. And I kept on watching the quarterly earnings, and it did good. It did good. I mean, it's a small cap company, just a just a two billion dollar small cap, and their basic business. I'll tell the name later of the company. Um, their business is basically uh, anybody with an Android phone. They integrate the advertising software into the phone. So um, basically, when you turn on your advertising, this so- they're basically just software engineers. So mm-hmm. it's a moat. It's a moat company that's what brad thomas likes to invest yes in. yep brad mm-hmm. talks moats mm-hmm. yeah moat companies and this was a moat and i saw the potential of this company um july 2019 july 2019 the weekend after the monday after fourth uh, of july i bought thirty thousand shares <laughs> nice. oh <laughs> for five dollars and 23 cents a share Okay. Mm-hmm. It was doing good. It was doing pretty good. And then March 2020, I think we all kind of remember that COVID came. The COVID crash came. Yes. Oh no. I was down 40 <laughs> percent. Oh my god. But but oh, there is a happy ending to this one. February 2021, I sold all of them. All the shares uh-huh. for $81.30 a share. Holy moly, that's awesome. <laughs> you can do All the right. math on what my we'll profit do... was. I think Teddy's doing it right now. Teddy's doing a quick Here. math. 81 times 30,000. Okay. Um, and you know something the wife didn't know about? Say it. $81. $81.30. That's there we what go. I used. And you had uh, 90,000 30, shares or 30,000 shares? 30,000. There we go. All right, there we go. And we have we have two point four, not dollars, not thousands, <laughs> million. There you go. <laughs> Holy crap, man! That is but that, extremely that, risky. I knew what yeah. I was doing because when I invested at the time, uh, I mean, I've been investing already for twenty plus years. I mean, I looked at the fundamentals. I looked at everything. Right. Past quarterly earnings. And I said, you know what? Why not? Because um, I bought NVIDIA 
back in its day, mm -hmm. back in 20, 2012. I rode that pony for a while. I bought it at $15 a share and sold it around 80. I had 10,000 shares. So I made a good profit from that one. Yeah. So wow. I my my problem was I was just exiting too quickly and not not writing it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh yes, the big enchilada. What is the name of the company? Sure. If you pull up a five year chart, you can see what I'm talking about. Ticker symbol Alpha Papa Papa Sierra Digital Turbine. Is it is it APPC? APPS Alpha oh, APPS, Papa Papa yeah. Sierra. Ah, there we go. There we go. I, I see heard it. Him. 2018, 2019. Look at the chart. Oh, yeah. Yep. I see the five year. Holy moly. Donut shop. And how did you find you, you? And you came across this company just. Sure, well, sure. Let me tell you a website that um, if you're really kind of techy, um, uh, it's a good website to have. It kind of spells it out for you on price movement of stock. It's uh -huh. called Finviz, www.finviz.com. Oh, yeah. yes. mm -hmm. That's what I use. That's one of the websites I use. Yes, Finviz is great. They do really good technical, like you say, your technical analysis, though. They do really good technical analysis stuff on mm -hmm. here. I'm, and as, like you uh, like you said, you know, as you get on and more seasoned into the game, you, you start to pick up different things. And, like, right, one thing I'm picking up now, I'm starting to, I like reading the charts and doing a little bit more technical analysis of the stocks. Right. Just, right. just because I like, I like, like you, like you said, you know, watching charts and, um, and be able to be able to pick up stuff. So Finviz is awesome. I, I've used it before. So yeah, this is cool. And, and on um, the fundamental side, Seeking mm -hmm. Alpha, Seeking Alpha is another yes. great website that I use. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Yahoo Finance. I currently use Yahoo Finance actually right now, the premium. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what I use that. And, um, and I got Morningstar free through my library. Okay. So, sure. so I use yeah. So I use that. So those are like my only two. At four a minute, I had like four or five like different subscriptions and stuff. And I'm like, all right, dude, you need to like calm down and just get two, and just keep it there. And, and it'll, you bring it'll up a good a good little tip for people out there is um I found that out too um I think last year that go get a free membership to your public library, and on mm -hmm. their website you can usually get a lot of free um gateways to things like the wall street journal or yahoo yep. finance consumer reports um i found out through mine i think i got consumer reports and uh, the wall street journal some other stuff that i haven't even exper uh, looked into yet but just having a free uh, library card <laughs> right interesting yeah. okay yeah you know that's the thing too i preached um i mean again to each their own but i don't believe in paying for information because especially in, in this day and age the information is out there between exactly. YouTube, mm -hmm. Google, Yahoo Finance. I did. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> my degree is in criminal justice. I don't have a lick of knowledge about finance. The only things I know about companies I learned on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, you have to do the research, like you said, and, and want to be able and want to like want to learn information. And But it's out there. It's like really like all this stuff absolutely. is it's out here for free if you you know, put in the time. I mean, you can literally put in an hour's work a week on the weekends and like you can easily go through these websites and figure out which website works best for you. Cause not all website is going to spit the same information back to each right. and every person. So it's like, I try them all, you know, try, go seeking alpha, try Yahoo Finance, try all the, when you sign up for free, try them all out, see which one, you know, fits your, your type of um, learning the best. And then, you know, that's you how you're going to, you're going to need maybe two or three to get different mm -hmm. metrics because, because, you know, you may get a good book value from one website, but another website will give you a lot of their um, earnings and financials. You know, there's just different websites, you know, will give you different um, information, but once you figure out which ones I'm mean, Finviz is great. I used Finviz because they did a really good um, instant charts. You, know, you could pull up, you know, charts mm -hmm. with channels and find your companies that you want to do like, you know, um, some credit spreads or something like that because they're trading within a, within a range and you can find those kinds of things pretty easily on Finviz because they do a good little um, instant chart channels and uptrends, downtrends, sideways trends. And I like yes. their little table on each individual company. You go down and screw the little table and it's got all the little details, you know, 52 week high analyst projections yep. and earnings. Mm -hmm. That's what I use. And the news. I saw 
I saw the little tiny gold nugget. I said, oh, this, this bad boy's got potential. Right. <laughs> but again, everybody has a different risk tolerance. You right. Know? Um, that was risky. That was real risky what I did. But it worked out, but I knew what I was doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And that you know, all comes from you being in, you know, being in stocks 20 plus years up to that, you know, you know, at right. that time. And, you know, you know, and that pays off because all of your experience and not one indicator is 100% green light to buy. So you you looked at a lot of things that you've learned throughout your investment journey to help you not really like it may look risky to us, but to you, you were like, you were more like, eh, why not? You know, so right. was, I mean, you know, especially during the COVID crash. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. I had some sleepless nights, but I knew what I, I just the confidence and the risk tolerance, the stomach got lost because I knew my patience would pay off. And it did. And mm-hmm. it did. You know, COVID was such an anomaly. I think a lot, a lot of people didn't know how to react to that. So, yeah, you know, holding on was, you know, obviously looking back now was the smartest thing to do. But it's it's tough when you're in the moment to decide if like right now, you know, people are, are looking at the market going, do I buy? Is it going to go lower? Is it going to go higher? You know, and I think, you know, Teddy's got a good mentality where you just buy through, you know, you just buy. Just oh, yeah. Whether it's high or low, you just keep buying, keep mm-hmm. buying, keep buying. Because in the end, it you know, you, the market generally goes up and to the right when you look at it, you know. Well, so. yeah, look at look at the day in session for the market. I mean, the S&P 500, it's all, it just one way, it goes up. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to get dips and valleys, but what you guys are doing is perfect. Just keep dripping, keep reinvesting, control your debt, pay off your debt. And, and right, I mean, right now, um, my house is paid off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? That's uh, awesome. It, yeah, it's a great feeling to pay your mortgage off. And I, I wrote a check for that. I mm-hmm. just wrote a check to the contractor to pay for a new kitchen for my wife. It's a beautiful life, guys. But you That was a neat I like that. I saw that post. That was a nice surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she was she was ecstatic, you know. I but bet. happy Love wife, it. happy life, you know. I'm with and, you, yeah. Better. Freedom that uh, <laughs> I'm able to do, you know. Mm-hmm. And and uh again, nope, I'm not doing it to brag, but I do it to inspire. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah. that's the beautiful thing about the DivTwit community is we all help each other out. We all give different pieces of advice on how to do it. And mm-hmm. my only thing is the only wrong way is to lose money. Yep. I've said it many, many times that this community is, is in, it's, it's encouraging, it's inclusive, it's willing to give advice. It's not like some of the other investing communities out there that want to call you names and and make clown emojis because you bought something or sold something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you just everyone's doing their own thing. And and I'll tell you what what I would do. I'm not telling you what to do. Like this whole point of this podcast is not to say this is what you need to go do, but this is what's worked for me. This is what hasn't worked for me. It might just work get, for you. It's the ball rolling. Get you to think and say, all right. I mean, I'm what can I do in my situation right now? Absolutely. How can right. I attack right. investing? It's worry about you know. How can you attack it? You know, don't let it attack you or catch you, you know, slipping. I mean, by that is what I mean by slipping is like not investing 10 years, 20 years. And then like, all right, now I want to pick it up. And, you know, sometimes, you know, life as we get older, you know, doesn't present the same opportunities that we have as that we have right now in your 30s and your 20s and so on. So you think you may have time down the line, but you never know how busy you may be. You never know how life can drag you and have you all over the place where you won't even be able to be focused on investing. So it's just like starting now, like literally right now and just like getting into the market, getting your feet wet and um, just, li- just listening and um, being able to ask questions will, you know, will help you go a long way. Right. Right. You're getting there too, right. Teddy, with your, you've got a lot of stuff kind of automatic, you know, you, you, you get money, you buy, you move on, you do your work when you're going to find out. And I know Dave will back me up. Once once kids enter the picture, once real family life enters the picture, then it's things like investing. It's hard to stay on top of. You know, you can't spend a couple hours in the evening listening to um, earnings calls or going through a financial sheet because like my my whole evening yesterday was spent from two o'clock in the afternoon till seven o'clock at night was, you know, the basketball game and then the the team Mm -hmm. after party. You know, so and all last week I I was doctor's appointments and and family stuff all last week. So, you know, you you're gonna find that you're setting yourself up now well to 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 accommodate your family in the future. 
but at the same time maintain your you know investing uh, plan and when that's mm-hmm. really what it needs to be it needs to be a plan you can't just decide to buy oh i'm going to be a dividend investor what does that mean it means sitting down it means deciding how much you're going to spend how much you want to automate how much you want to drip how much you want to keep buying i'm a big yep. fan of buying a dividend um asset and then using some of those dividends to buy growth or to buy some other asset you know because to me that's i like that idea i know dripping works out real well um, for a lot of people because you just get that snowball effect um and i mm-hmm. and, and i'm doing that in my roth i'm dripping in my roth but um i do the uh the dividend buying into other things with my other account something to keep in mind my best advice for someone who um set realistic goals um when you're getting on an age and a number that you want to retire with. Mm-hmm. And I, we, I know this conversation goes around the dip fit community and every region of the country is different. I live in South Florida and prices here are high. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about Northwest Arkansas. I would imagine the cost of living is not as much as it is here in South Florida. It's beautiful. So each person, <laughs> you know, each person has a figure in their head how much they're able to retire on. I mean, it depends on where you live. I would imagine someone who lives in Alabama can easily and live pretty good on a five hundred thousand dollar retirement. Mm-hmm. You know, probably, yeah. That seems logical, right? New York City, forget it. South Florida. Right. Maybe in the middle of the state, you know, but, um, <laughs> you know, kind of just uh, do do your own research and, okay, I need this amount based on where I live. I mm-hmm. need to take care of this, that, and set a goal uh, to achieve a financial number that you're comfortable with retiring. And even when you do retire, too, um, part-time job. When I told the wife the good news, we cried, we hugged. Up and joy. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. What are you gonna do with yourself? Right. <laughs> I said, oh, I didn't think about that, you know. So uh I took a real estate course and became a realtor. So I do that part time just to keep myself active. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. You know, the other thing too is um there are some young families, you you guys included, to think about when you retire, because unfortunately, in a good way for me. I'm too young to get Medicaid or Medicare. So guess how much a month I have to pay for my family's health insurance plan? How much? Two thousand dollars a month. Whoa. Because I'm too young. Wait, Medicaid what do you mean Medicaid. too young for Med? You keep- wait, what's that? I, I have no idea. <laughs> Sixty-two, fifty-nine and a half. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Okay. If I had stayed with the sheriff's office and retired twenty-five years, they would have paid for my health insurance, but. You know, all this money just fell from the sky. And I said, yeah. you know, sir, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very yeah, much. I'm out. <laughs> I don't need to work anymore, you know? So, and, and Paul, you you know, you've been in law enforcement, so you can kind of relate kind of like. Uh, Same thing. Kind of old, if I'd know? stayed in now medical retirement, but, you know, my decision to move out here um, was worth more than that. Just because I know it'd be, I'm working out here, you know, mm-hmm. we've got a nice, nice relaxing job that provides me benefits um, because I I, I saw that, you know, when they, when you're not working, um, then you got to be responsible for your own medical insurance. And that is a pretty penny. Yes. Two grand a month. I mean, I can afford it, but just something to keep in mind. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and then I don't know how many people on dips with live in Florida, but our homeowners. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you That's still what, got a little expenses still, you know, after yeah. being fully retired, there's still some expenses that you need to, that oh, you're going to yeah. have. You still got to pay taxes. You still got to pay, you know, um, and that's a lot of people, when, you, when you're looking at moving to these different states, um, people don't, I think, look into all the details because I know um, there's no income tax in Florida, Nevada, Texas, but that those states, they have to fund themselves somehow. That's the question right now here in Arkansas. They're, the governor is trying to propose eliminating income tax. And I tell some of my coworkers, well, the state's still got to fund itself. If there's no income tax, then which taxes that we pay now are going to go up? 
because in California they pay income tax, but they also pay exorbitant um, property taxes and right. gas taxes. I mean, everything. And that California right. you get taxed to death. Right. Um, I know in Texas, I don't think there's income tax, but they pay pretty high um, homeowners taxes, real estate taxes. Um, states like Nevada and Florida, they have tourism that they can fund a lot from. So right. your taxes maybe are not are affected as much. But I told them, I said, Arkansas, there's not a huge tourism business right. in the state. Um, you know, so they're going to come after your property tax. They're going to come after your other kinds of taxes to fund the state if they do anything with the income tax. So. Be careful right. what you wish for. Right, right, exactly. That's my point. You know, it, it, careful what you wish for. I mean, it's a right. good life. Don't get me wrong, but it's not all mm -hmm. exactly rainbows and unicorns. And even at that, I still got to balance my portfolio. I got to mm -hmm. jostle it, make sure I'm not losing any money. Or right, you, you know, I'm still what I do is if I get a let's say I get a thirteen thousand dollar dividend check, ten percent gets set aside, and then when I decide. I reinvest that into more stocks. So you still pay that. yourself. <laughs> See, yeah, you absolutely. Still, you still pay myself. Yeah, yeah. you still you pay yourself. Dividend, whether it's income, money from yes. work, or whether it's income from dividend, you still take your 10%, your 15, 20%, whatever you're doing, and, and investing that for the long term because mm -hmm. you got to live on some of it. But that's, right. that's, that's very, I hadn't considered that aspect of, the, of being fire and, 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 and living that lifestyle. But yeah, you still got to keep paying yourself because hopefully you live to a ripe old age and you want to have money yep. there. I listened to a, um, a podcast for um, a wealth management company out in California. And one of the things they like to say is they, uh, one of the, one of the hosts um, says he wants the last check he ever writes on his deathbed to bounce. He wants to spend every penny that he has, but have enough money right up to that day. You know? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And I'm like, there you go. You know, live your life and, and, and spend your money. And, and you know, yeah. the last well, check I you write that, bounces. I sat in that Ferrari <laughs> and I said, Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy can you be similar. buried in it <laughs> I, mean, I I like high speed stuff you know I mean, oh yeah me too Dave you already know <laughs> ex-military oh. guys I was trained by SWAT Navy SEALs Army Rangers if you hang around with them and that high speed stuff just rubs off on me you know and uh, just an adrenaline junkie <laughs> I am I am an adrenaline junkie right I mean it worked out for me but again to each their own you guys you know you know yourself best Mm -hmm. You're not comfortable dumping 20% cash allocation into some small company out of Texas that has only a $2 billion market cap. That's okay. You know, that's okay. Right. okay. I, I'd rather <laughs> do what I did then, and we can all agree on this one, than cryptocurrency. Right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're still recovering if they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the only thing would be maybe Bitcoin itself or Ethereum, but any other of those NFTs or tokens. I'm I'm Larry. I'm Larry. Mm -hmm. Because crypto yeah. has no fundamentals. I mean, there's no there's no quarterly earnings with crypto, right? Mm -hmm. No. Crypto doesn't pay a dividend, do they? Nope. There you go. It just moves off of you know volume and the technical analysis. I mean, just like stocks, but like you said, that the earnings report, and that's how we get paid dividends. You know, it's off right. of the earnings report. So, right. you know, not seeing how if the comp or if the coin is profitable, if it's if sales are growing and all, you know, all the other indicators, you know, we can't get that deep with looking at a coin. So no, only thing we can right. say is this is what it's, this is what it is and this is what it can buy. And this, this is just the value of it. And I'm not against buying it. No, but it, I'm not, it's not going to be the basis of my portfolio. It's going to mm -hmm. be something. It's just like with these, we talked last week about, you know, um, fundrise or land, yeah. these kinds of alternative investing. There's, mm -hmm. there's a place for it maybe a little, a little nibble here and there to ex experiment how it works, but you want the bulk of your money to be working for you in, in, a, in, a, in the less risky aspect. Um, but putting a few bucks in a, in a $1 million micro cap to see if that thing goes from a buck to 60 bucks, <laughs> you know, that's something you can do if you got the extra money, but don't make yeah, it. If you got the dry powder. Thesis. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, again, I mean, I was researching digital turbine for at least two or three weeks. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you I did, did your homework. I did my I'm, homework. I'm, yeah. I'm in a similar play right now. We can talk about offline, but I'm in a similar similar play right now. That I'm mm -hmm. thinking is going to do the same thing. But you mm -hmm. know, it's not my it's not the bulk of my portfolio, but it's a nice little chunk. But it's you know, I I I'm in that situation where I've got the benefit of 
you know, a pension and, and some security there um, as well. So you know, it, it is a risk. And I think the other part that you didn't mention when you talk about risk is there's the risk slash reward. So right. is the risk and the reward. Uh, and that's what I learned from my, my buddy who got me into stock investing in the first place. He was a, he was a very um, risk mindset person. He wasn't afraid of risk. He would take risk, but he always had the risk reward analysis done. And he knew, okay, I can risk 10% of my portfolio because mm-hmm. this could potentially return, you know, an 80% return, 100% return. Um, if I'm not going to risk 10% of my portfolio for a 20% return, you know, he's just not, he had that kind of mindset. So, you know, if that's what y'all got to look at, you got to look at your money, how much you got and look at it in real dollar sense and say, okay, right. you know, I'll take 300. I, I do a regular Apple calendar spread every Friday. Um, I spend about 300 bucks to buy it. And every week that thing returns 10 to 50% because I manage it throughout the week. But I mean, it's like clockwork. This thing works, but no matter how confident I am in this thing, I'm not mm-hmm. going to go put my whole portfolio in this right. Apple calendar spread. Right. Because it's, it, it could drop, you know, it's you're you're betting on one single stock and I'm not going to do that, but mm-hmm. it's a fun little thing to do with 300 bucks a week. Right. No, that's, that's, that's a uh, pretty much right on the spot. Now is your pension from when you're in corrections, Paul, uh, you still have it, right? Yeah. So with me is, um, I left the state at 48. When I turn 50, I'll call up PERS and say, send me my money. And I can collect that until death. (laughs) So one thing you should know, and that's a little tidbit for you, because uh, you and I were in law enforcement, corrections, public service. You can withdraw your money with no penalty. Yeah. You, you'll get taxed, but you don't get that 10% penalty. Right. You know how uh, you get penalized the additional 10%? Firefighters, cops, judges, corrections officers, whatever, you don't get the, the 10% penalty. Just right. Know. And that is this wow. isn't okay. – um, our pension is with the with the state. It's not a 401k or 457. Right. But you have a, yeah, you I did have that a 401a. With, with the, it's a yeah, 401a. I, I did that with the, uh, with the 457 I had out there. That helped some of our moving costs, um, right. but that was a little bit of money. But yeah, the actual pension itself is going to be no, is penalty free, income taxed. But um, that's that's my money coming. Right. Heck yeah, yeah, that's good. Here in Florida, you got two choices: you can be on the pension plan, or you can be on the investment plan. Mm-hmm. And even when I signed up back 15, 18 years ago with the sheriff's office. I chose the investment plan because I wanted the freedom to move my money, invest my money the way I wanted to, mm-hmm. even with the experience that I had. That's why I did not opt for the pension plan. Right. And I, I was helped. the I was the person who had no clue how the market worked and stuff. So, yeah. you know, it's going to help me now. And uh, with my current job, we have a, a mandatory 403b that the university mm-hmm. matches 10% of. So, and that's where with dividends help here, I've got. Um, Every paycheck, five hundred bucks going into FZ Rocks. Hey, there we go. And that's automatic through Fidelity. The money gets deducted from my account, my my paycheck, and it goes right into Fidelity. Fidelity does the buy for me. I don't have to touch it. Right, mm. right, right. And th- that's the goal too. Is when you're five years out and you're ready for the big day, start paying up debt. I'm just mm-hmm. telling you because when you don't have a job anymore, you retired early. The bill's still coming. <laughs> No kidding. Yes. The bill still coming. Yeah. The bill's coming with you know, you're like, Oh yeah, I don't have a job today. So like, yeah. uh and I'm an old I'm an old retired dad with, you know, a ten and eight year old. So that's I've got a whole lifetime of of, in, of expenses coming with those two. So oh, yeah. preparing for it. And yeah. I'm preparing for it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody got daughters? Yeah. yeah, you got a daughter, right, Paul? Those I've got a daughter. daughter and a son, yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to get married. <laughs> yeah, that would be their. Oh, that's when I cash in their M one. <laughs> oh, yep. Get Paul Daddy, freaking log in, cash in the oh, whole thing. Right, that's for your wedding, dear. Yeah, right. this one's. Yeah, this one's for your wedding. Right, exactly. Right. So, Teddy, how many years do you think you got left until the big retirement? Ah, <laughs> he's waiting for I his have, promotion right now. I have no idea. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you here. Here, here is, here's like a, a hypothetical situation. I'm thinking like anywhere between 2045 and 2050. There you go. Okay. I'm, I'm I, I don't know where in between there. 
I see Teddy is this way. I see you, Dave, as well. I don't, I don't like the word retirement because it really kind of indicates I've stopped working and now I'm just sitting around the pool. You know, that's I not. Mind doing I don't. I don't envision that at all for myself. <laughs> you know, I I started this um this Amazon thing um, with the idea that in, by the time I hit fifty in two years, when I can start collecting my purrs, then that's going to be a supplement to the Amazon business. And the more I'm learning about the Amazon business, is you can turn that into a, a pretty hands-off deal that you manage as opposed to work. You know, so if I can manage money and manage a business and not have to work every day at the at it, that that's my goal. You know, right. not to retire and to be like, okay, I'm just going to sit around all day and 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 watch TV and 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 mm -hmm. you know, do whatever, but to have the freedom to do what I want when I want. And and to do some work when I need to do some work, that's the goal. And I think you're living that yourself. I am. I know you're yeah, I am. Yeah, the real so. estate uh, wife always gives me a honey to do list. So right. you know, I'm not, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, chilling. Trust me. Exactly. So, so I think there's yeah. and I th and, and the, if you if if your goal is to retire and not work and do it, that's cool too. You know, live live your life. Um, but mm -hmm. that's that's my goal. And I think I see that with Teddy. I see. I don't see Teddy ever slowing down. I honestly, I would like to own like a couple laundry mats. Yeah, mm -hmm. in my future, I like, like laundry mats. Yeah, I think that yeah, I, are... I like them because no one, no one ever robs a laundry mat. You can it can run its, <clears throat> itself by itself, and it's open twenty four hours, and they're always jam packed. Yep. Oops! Every yep. time I drive by one, I'm like, look at that! Someone's getting paid passive income. All everyone in yep. there is needing laundry and just in there handling their business. No cash on site. You know, everything's run by a card. So it's like, I would love to get in that business one There's day so and just be able to manage. Now. Just yeah, sitting no here, employees. I get an alert saying, um, yeah, you know, not 3M mm -hmm. paid a dividend today. You know, that came on, on my little alerts. And I can open up my Amazon app and go, oh, look, at last night I sold a couple items and I made 20 bucks, whatever. You know, so to be able to sit here and, and talk to you guys, which is fun, mm -hmm. and still have some little money coming in, trickling in here and there, that's the goal. And, and right, just and, absolutely. You know, multiply that. Right. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. No, it's it's for your viewers. Like I say, my first piece of advice: if you're in your 20s and 30s, work on that debt, start paying it off, um, and, and get that emergency fund because emergencies always happen. Two years ago, my and this is Florida. AC's on 365 days a year, almost every day, and my AC unit crapped out. Mm. Uh, luckily, the wife and I had some cash set aside and. No problem. Wrote a nice check. Here you go. Have a nice day. And that's a good feeling. That's mm -hmm. a great feeling when emergency happens and boom. Yeah, I bet. That's, yeah. A, good that's a great feeling. So that's my best advice. A thousand bucks. I know everybody that's listening or watching can save a thousand dollars. You can do it. Okay. And in this <clears> environment, you can put a thousand dollars in a, in a high yield money market and actually earn some interest on it. There you go. Yes. Yeah. I mean, interest literally, I mean, now. 3.74% you can get some places. Right. Yeah. It's better than absolutely. Used to be. it's better paying some dividend stocks. You ain't got to put, yeah. in, you're not even risking your money in the market. <laughs> right. 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 That's for sure. And, and then uh, slow and steady wins the race. I hear that all the time uh, on DivTwit. Um, and and <clears throat> your risk tolerance is up to you. If you want to do what I did, all the power to you. Wouldn't recommend it, but mm -hmm. go at your own pace. Do it your own, you know, your own method. Do what's right. The only wrong way is losing money. <laughs> right. Yep. Exactly. And then goes back to uh, um, what you guys were saying um, about talking about with kids. I was thinking I'm gonna pivot when I have when we, uh, when I have my first kid, when we have our kid, first kid, whenever. Um, I'm gonna pivot to just be strictly like just hit the ETFs and just be strictly ETFs instead of just you know putting all my information and finding the best single stocks as well. I'm just going to, cause I know the time that's going to be needed. So just making it automatic and buying the ETFs that I've already know that are proven strategies that are already, I know that are working well, just help me sleep better at night knowing that I've already had this, you know, working for me and continue to go. So that's the point at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year, I made a huge portfolio adjustment. I don't know if you guys um, remember it. Um, cause I was heavy heavily into ExxonMobil. I still own ExxonMobil. It's now about 8% of my portfolio, but mm -hmm. the biggest portfolio holding that I have, because you mentioned ETF, is SCHD. That is now mm -hmm. 21. Yep. 
21 percent. I just ran the numbers today. Let's see here. Twenty one. Twenty one percent of my portfolio is SEHD. So wow, that's awesome to hear. <clears throat> yeah, and guys, this is coming from Sandstone Capital. The dividend king himself, he owns SCHD. This is not just the dividend dog and Paul. Right. It's a, it's a yeah. solid, so solid holding for. I a cannot base. wait until they announce the. Uh, it's supposed to be my first dividend for SCHD. Because there's a SCHD challenge, right? Yes, the 52 week challenge. We're buying. Yeah. Am I buying exempt stone. or am I still in? Am I, no, I'm no, you're ready. in. No, okay. no, 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 you're in. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm already at the finish line. I'm just kind of waiting for y'all. Come on. I'm making y'all up. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us are we're pulling our tails. We're coming. <laughs> okay. We're coming. <laughs> so I'm going to be, every time one of y'all finish the finish line, I'm going to high five y'all every time. Heck yeah. No, I'm I'm actually at 45 shares, so I'm almost at 50. So okay. I'm almost there to 100. I'll be there soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. But I'll be waiting for you all, you know. Um, <laughs> Carbon copy, Dairyland dividends, Dave Greta, Disney, Green, Disney Beach. She's awesome. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I know. I want to know what the, what, is there a benefit to having the name Dave in dividend community? Because everyone we've, <laughs> there's, I, uh, Teddy te texted me and he's like, Hey, we're going to interview Dave. And I'm like, which one? Cause we yeah, he's like, which Dave? I was like, I know there's three of them. <laughs> I had a screenshot the Twitter, like this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the right one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, at the sheriff's office, they did call me, they called me dividend Dave. That was oh, my nickname, go. but that's already been taken by, uh, passive income posse. Or they call yeah. me the stock doctor. There you go. Hey, there we go. The stock doctor. I like that. I like my that. nickname is three bills for a completely different reason. Deputies were coming to me, hey, Dave, can you help me out? Can you help me out? You know, I made, um, I won't mention their names, because they're obviously law enforcement, but I made two of the millionaires. There you go. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and so and uh, um, one was really, back in 2014, was hell-bent on AMD. I'm like, ah, it's been around for a while. Nothing's going to happen. Even myself. Like me with Intel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was really uh, A and D. They're not gonna do anything. They've been around for you know forty some odd years. Nothing's gonna happen. Well, I got egg in my face. So if you, if you look at A and D, I mean, look at it now. You know, it's uh, eighty two, eighty three dollars a share. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it went all the way up. Mm -hmm. You know, it has some ups and downs. But I remember back yeah. then, twelve or thirteen dollars, and I'm like, don't even bother. I said to myself, twelve to thirteen. I can't even fathom seeing these stocks. At eighty or hundred, you guys are like, yeah, this is at twelve dollars one day. I'm like, how? Yeah, I was looking at Microsoft and it face. was eighty bucks. Going, I don't know. It's been sideways for so long, and then it wasn't what? long after that that thing. Yeah, I remember. Oh I remember looking God. at it in yeah, my. So I was in my kitchen something. looking at it, going, man, am I gonna buy it? I was talking to my buddy, and I'm like, I should buy. It, it was like eighty nine bucks, I think. And and I'm like, he's he's telling me, he's like, no, they're they're getting ready to blow. He goes, they're they're really investing a lot in their in their cloud, and it's gonna go. I'm like, this thing's been sideways for decades. I can't imagine it going. And I didn't buy it. And yeah. now I'm like, oh, crap. Look at that. Right. Now, NVIDIA, if you, Teddy, if you got a chart up. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. That I got, back I got in charts up. 2014, when it was 12 or $13 a share. NVIDIA? Let's see. Yeah, it, it, oh, my. Yeah. AMD's chart just so sideways for, seems yeah, like decades. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden, it just that's why I, uh, you know, nothing's gonna happen. And this deputy was like, Oh no, Dave, it's gonna, I'm telling you, should, oh, no, 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 no. wow, same got my thing face. with NVIDIA, NVIDIA, same thing. Now, that one I took advantage, I bought 10,000 shares of that, but what I did wrong was uh, I just I made a quick profit. Mm -hmm. I did that with um, Axon, I had Axon at $15 and I got out mostly in the 30s. I know, look at now, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look at it anymore. I I don't even look at that chart because oh, I am like oh, I, can't, I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bought X on that during uh, the COVID. Fifty one dollars a share. I bought X on. I still have um, it. I had it in the before COVID, long before when is a a buddy of mine's like, hey, watch X on. They're gonna come up because they're doing a lot with their their cloud and law enforcement. And right. we were in the in that business. We you know our our department had hadn't gone to uh, body cameras yet. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. So it was like high teens. I bought it. And I remember watching it go 30 bucks. I'm like, okay, that's great. You know, I made 100%. I'm out. And now it's triple digits. I mean, yeah. yeah. I know. But that's where I've learned patience. I mean, that's what we talked about. Yes. I didn't lose money on it, 
but I left a lot of money on the table by not being patient and letting that thing run. I did the same, you know, I've done it all with Apple and, and those companies I bought back in the day that I, if I'd held on to now, and that's what's flipped my mindset in the last couple of years was looking back at what I owned and what I sold and what it would be worth now had I held on to it. So that's right. been kind of the, the, the motivation I've needed to just, okay, stop with the penny stock, stop trying to get rich quick. You know, I've got a little portfolio mm-hmm. set aside for some options and some and some spec plays, but for the most part, let's just let these dividends do their job. Right, and that's I learned my lesson from the Nvidia. I made you know sixty grand from the Nvidia, I think roughly give or take, and then that's what encouraged me to stay with digital turbine. Really encouraged me in March of twenty twenty when I was down over forty <laughs> percent. That was your yeah. You it's going to pay your, off. Your thesis. And it that's did. good. It and did. see, you you stuck with it. And I mean, if people see their portfolio go down 20%, 30% on a stock. I mean, even when I first started investing, you know, going down 30%, you know, like MPW and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, dude, hold it. It's going to be all right. The market itself is going down too. look at the overall picture. You're not the only right. one that the market mm-hmm. is poking its fork at, right. you know, because sometimes people think the market is just making fun of them. Instead, the entire market itself right. is just all going down it's itself. just the environment so it's like, right now well, yeah first of all there's there's i um mentioned this with uh income passive income posse um yin and yang we all remember yin and yang same yes. thing bulls and bears mm-hmm. that's all mm-hmm. bulls and, bears. and you have macroeconomic news and you have microeconomic news don't 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 watch a lot of cnbc you're gonna <laughs> just pause your brain and you're going to be aye, like, aye, aye. did I do the right decision? <laughs> no, ignore the noise. You know, Dave Greta, uh, uh, he explains the same thing. Ignore the noise. Just invest mm-hmm. in solid dividend companies. Look around you. J&J, you know, mm-hmm. JP Morgan Chase. Yes. Mobile, look around you. Cube, their storage facilities. They're a diamond yes. down here in Florida. Cube, I own a lot of Cube. Look around okay. you. Starbucks, right? Starbs, Starbs dividend just did a post uh, a couple hours ago. Mm-hmm. Wendy, and I'm like, oh, my oh God. he's he does a really good job too. Darth dividend, yeah, he yeah. does. Shout out to Darth dividend yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah, he does a really good job. Before I even yeah. got on podcast Twitter, I was actually just watching his videos in my notebook. Like, oh yeah, these are some stocks to invest in. Same with the dividend diplomats too. But go go ahead with uh, Wendy's. Yeah. yeah, Wendy's and then uh, Starbucks, Wendy's. I think. McDonald's, mm-hmm. you know, things you see around, just look around. People are like, well, what do I invest in, Dave? Just look around you. Stop. Mm-hmm. Pause. Look around. What are people looking in your hand? Around? You're literally yeah. asking me what to invest in with the Apple product. <laughs> right. right. Look at your right Apple iPhone. You know? <laughs> right. Exactly. What you does know? everybody buy? That, that easy. Right. Right. And you Don't buy safe. some, you know, uh, uh, snake oil stock, you know? Don't. Yeah. And stuff that you don't know what the business is and you just hear that it's a short squeeze like don't buy it just because it's a short squeeze like yeah like right. actually know who the business what they do how they make their money at least know those basic things and yeah. if they're profitable or not yeah. there's and lots of noise you can do some basic dd really quickly and decide mm-hmm. if you want to get into it i mean like this all goes back to our original point if you want to throw some money at if you think you know bed bath and beyond is gonna is gonna squeeze put a hundred bucks in there i mean that's fun you know you can do that yeah, but don't yep. put half your portfolio in there and bank on that being your retirement. Yeah, you know, like yeah, I got ten percent with it that's beyond. <laughs> with your risk reward. Right, right, right. And and nowadays, you know, I may sound old, or you, you know, but you guys have got a lucky. Back in my day, guess what? I had to do. I had to what? pick up the phone, dial the number, and get charged. Thirty dollars for a transaction. Oh so man, I remember. I've heard those stories. That would wipe me out. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got yeah. in when I was paying five dollars, you know, a, a trade back, you know, when I first started, it was five dollars a trade, four ninety five with Schwab or whatever. And right. then when they went free, I was like, Oh man, that's awesome. I can't imagine having to right. make that phone call and pay thirty bucks in each end. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. The mortgage account I was with back in the day was Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And of course they split up and Sheris and Lehman Hutton and all that. Everybody's oh, remember up. those commercials? Well, yeah. my broker EF Hutton, huh? Yes, when you... <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'd actually pick up the phone and get charged thirty bucks a trade. So, oh wow, I've been worth it. Yeah, 
you had yeah, to I do. Remember, I remember when stocks were, you know, like McDonald's was twenty three dollars and a third. I know? remember looking at those in the paper. I yeah. remember seeing the fractions of the pennies. Fractional shares. Yeah. You know, they're in fractions as opposed to the decimal system. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm old school. I remember yeah. I was uh I think I was probably in the fifth grade or something like that when they we did like a little stock challenge, you know, and they wanted to, and the very minimal of, of financial education they could give you was look at the at the at the stock sheet in the newspaper. That's what you had to do. You had to wait for the paper to come out and look for the section for the stocks and then see how they all went in, in eighths and thirds of pennies and I remember that. I wasn't into it, but I remember doing that exercise for class and I you know, I didn't follow through with it. But yeah. If yeah. you're talking about ace and pennies of, of a penny, um, then you've been in the market for quite a while. That's me. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Old school. I haven't heard. <laughs> I knew you guys had to call in, but I didn't know it was 30 bucks every time you picked up the phone. Oh, my right. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a small business. I'm from New England, as you can tell from my accent. And uh, I had a small business. So I took some of the business money and I invested in the stocks back then. I remember buying AT&T um, and, and just – Using the dividend to build up my portfolio. Same thing. You know, mm-hmm. AT&T, 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 uh, Nortel. Oh, yeah. I remember buying some Nortel way back in the day. But <clears throat> good times indeed. Good times. But um, but for your listeners, just pay off the debt. Get an emergency fund. Mm-hmm. Hold up on TD Ameritrade. Uh, Robinhood. That's the other thing, too. I, I uh, regret not mentioning this on uh, Dividend Days podcast, but Paper trade, yeah. Td Ameritrade, you know what paper, yes. uh, paper trading mm-hmm. is, right? It's, yes. it's a fake account. Yep. You get like the Td Ameritrade, you get two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you can test your skill. Yeah, if you lose money, you you lose money. If you make money, okay, mm-hmm. let's try this. Paper trade, paper trade, paper trade. Yeah, that's true. That's my yeah. advice for people who look into they want to get into options trading is do the paper trade first. The 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 money the fills. They're not accurate because it's a computer algorithm, but the the way the stock price moves and the way your account moves when you own a spread or you own a, a, an options contract, you can see how it moves very quickly. How you can go, you know, I've gone from 150% up to an 80% loss in a few minutes. And that's what got me out of day trading options because I didn't have the, I don't have the, the, the guts for that. But, right. you, you know, there's, but paper trading is, yeah, it's free. You can get a free TD account and do some paper trading and watch how the, how the, how the market moves, how the price action moves. And you get a real feel on, on what's going to happen with that options contractor. That's why I, I really encourage that for people who look into options to start. I, there. I do too. Yeah. Or even just buy and hold securities, just paper trade yeah. it. You know, you get 250 grand and it's it's yours to do what you want. You can short stuff or do options. Um, yeah, options. Uh, two important words. You ready? Delta and theta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you need to know, them. You know what they do because, yep. uh, you know, woo, yep. it, options move very fast, and very quick. Very yeah. quick. What if I thought I want to say uh, stairs up, elevator down? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. That's yeah, true. literally. Yeah, options can be uh, fun, but um, but there's a downside and a plus right. side to everything. Theta the decay mm-hmm. is real. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, uh, speaking of options, I mean, banks are going down this week. <laughs> Man, if you got puts in SVP, I, you, that's what I was thinking about the other day. You're not really going to, unless you shorted SVP shares. You're, there's you're, Apparently, I saw on Twitter, there was one trader out there that shorted, uh, did a $150 put or something. See the put pay because you can, if you short, then you're going to end up making money because this the stock right. just stops trading. You keep your money, but if you uh, bought a put and you can't sell it, then you're holding that bag regardless. Right. If you got so out I, when it dropped sixty percent, then you you made your money. But if you're holding mm-hmm. a put, you could be holding the bag. That's yeah right because right. there's so That's much true. there's so much a demand on on the put side because uh, I noticed a downturn with Tesla, and mm-hmm. I bought Tesla puts. So I made money as the stock went down. So, but I noticed, and I, once again, I use Finviz. <clears throat> I've Finviz. got all my. Um, I got rid of most of my long um, options contracts, but I'm still holding a uh, a Roku put. So I'm hoping that that I guess it's a September um, Roku put. I think that's going to pay off. But especially now that they just re- the press release that they have, uh, they've got money in SVB. So we'll see if that affects them on Monday. Right, and then the other thing too, um, trade the indices. 
Yes. The, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the spy and uh, the QQQs, right? I mean, I'd rather trade an indices, an index versus a, a stock in, in most cases. Right. You know, either the NASDAQ or the uh, S&P is going to go up or down. I made a post uh, Friday. I always, uh, I always, uh, I, I buy the, uh, I buy cash secured puts on SQQQ before Jerome Powell speaks. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, after he speaks, things are going to start going down. When things go down, SQQQ is the inverse. So that goes up. Right. A little trick. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, you know. No. Right, right. Yep. Oh, yeah, this is yeah. not financial advice. It's not financial <laughs> no, advice. I've done right. that. I've, yeah. played on, I've played the Powell speech before where I, right before he talks, I buy an at-the-money call or at-the-money put because yep. inevitably it does this after he talks. Right. It has a drop and then a reversal. So you get out at that moment because it's right. going to reverse back. But, I mean, it's worked pretty well last few times, and I've done like one or two contracts at-the-money yeah. you know uh, 20 minutes before he talks because then you're going to ride that wave but you got to be watching you got to get out but that's, that's not that's advice right. either that's that's just right. what i did and it's it's worked right right yeah people are like oh that's a good idea dave good idea yeah, <laughs> so, yeah i loaded up about five or ten cash secured puts on sqqq boy Heck making yeah. that money and i got out <laughs> yep no one no out. no one to hold them no one to fold them yep no <laughs> one to hold them no one to fold them exactome you've been doing Name this a while you know <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. exactly we appreciate your time this sunday dave very much it's, it's i really enjoyed talking to you this was a good chat yes no i uh yes the, the, the this community awesome. is awesome all of them uh i know i named off a few but it's great um are you guys going to the investor conference in may dave is or teddy is yes teddy i will be there, there. i'll okay, be in so texas in may i just found out my i was supposed to go to training next week in texas and i got canceled so that's going to be in May. I'm going to Texas for training. Okay. All right. Well, we'll miss you. But uh, no, yeah. definitely a great chat. Um, uh, you know, I'm top uh, with a small other, a few other people. But, you know, I, I enjoy watching people grow. That's, that's the mm -hmm. thing, too. Is I like seeing people grow and make money. You know, that's, that's the name of the game. And just definitely. Of our life. You know, it's, it's like the best feeling, guys. I. There are some times where at night I say to myself, whoops, what am I doing? I don't have to set my alarm clock anymore, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's or nice go make sure my uniform is all nice and pressed and clean. Just have your uniform. Inspected. Oh, man. I haven't shaved since I retired. I hated shaving <laughs> all those years. Yeah. Yeah. We had a hair shaving policy. Yeah. yeah. No tattoos mm -hmm. on the arms. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could have tats. No tattoos on the arms. I know yeah. some departments they they change the policies on that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I miss it. I miss I miss the action, the thrill, the high speed stuff. But this is a good life, it really. Is. Oh yeah. yeah. I I hope everybody you. makes it in the digital community. You know, to achieve fire, it's like the best thing. Yes, and that's and that's why we're here, and um, that's why we're going to continue to show up every day and provide good content, having guests like yourself on, on yeah. Sundays, and we're going to continue to put out you know what's on our watch list or any information that we find valuable for our viewers and listeners out there so we definitely thank you um dave and Anytime. you know for coming on and you know giving us your background and your history just on investing and some golden nugget tips on how you got to where you are today and telling everyone that you know you started at just the way we're starting today and we just got to keep going so we thank you for that yes anytime you're welcome appreciate you guys having me on yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, all right then, guys. Well, I'm going to round it out here on the Investing on a 9 to 5 podcast. It is your boy, the Dividend Dog. We got Paul, Options underscore Legacy, and our special guest, Sandstone Capital. Um, thank you guys both again for having, you know, having us on or having Dave being on. Together. Sorry. <laughs> for being together on this fine Sunday, and we will catch you guys on the next show. Don't forget right. to hit the like and subscribe button. We're out. All right, later.